guys. I received a word from the Lord on 10, 1, 14. Uh, the title of this word is Arise, My Mighty Army. And I'm going to go ahead and read that for you. It says, Arise, my mighty army. Why do you buckle underneath the load of your enemy? Have I not called you? Have I not chosen you to walk in my power? Have I not given you my authority? Do I not work beside you to destroy the works of darkness? Why do you choose to turn your head? Why do you choose to fold your hands as though you are weak and helpless? My warriors, my mighty warriors, I have called you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Many of you see yourselves as grasshoppers. I see you as mighty. Anoint your eyes and ears that you may see, that you may have wisdom and understanding. I have already given you everything you need to easily defeat the, the many enemies that constantly wage war against you and your brethren. Arise, my warriors. My word is in your mouth. It cuts your enemy to shreds. Declare that my kingdom comes and that my will shall be done. Submit to me. Submit to me. Resist your enemy. Fear no one except the one who holds all things in his hand. March. Advance. Your king is with you. I have already given you the victory. Lord, we just thank you for this word, Father God. Lord, let it penetrate deep into our hearts. Let it stir us, Lord God, to, to seek you. Lord God, to consecrate our, our eyes and our ears to you, to hear and to see, to understand. Lord, we ask you for knowledge and wisdom and understanding, Father. And we know that you give it to us liberally without finding fault. And we thank you for it, Lord. We just love you so much. Use us for your glory. Help us, Lord, to be that mighty warrior. Help us, God, to see ourselves as you see us, Lord. And help us never, Lord God, to, to bend underneath. Lord, the, the load that the enemy tries to put upon our backs because, Lord, we know that you have set us free. And, Lord, we declare and we, we decide that we will walk in that freedom and we praise you for it, God. Let your word come out our mouth like a mighty sword. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. When I first received this word, I prayed and asked the Lord about it. To be honest, I didn't know if this word was, if it was a pep talk to the faithful or if it was a rebuke to the sleeping church. And after spending time in prayer with it, over it with the Lord, I know that it's both. It's, it's, it both speaks to the faithful, the faithful and to those in the body of Christ, God's children that are not faithful, that uh, they are called to be mighty warriors, but they are or not. And the Lord said in this word, he said to anoint your eyes and your ears that you might see, that you might have wisdom and understanding. And, and I, I thought about that, what, what the Lord meant in that. Uh, I do want to share one scripture with you, and then I'll talk about that some. Revelation uh, chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 18 and 19, and it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold purified by fire so that you may be rich and white clothing so that you may be clothed and so that the shame of your nakedness does not appear and anoint your eyes with eye salve so that you may see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent. This uh, this was spoken to the Laodicean, the lukewarm church. And many within the body of Christ is lukewarm. But the Lord is saying to, that we should wake up, that we should uh, anoint our eyes and our ears to hear and to see. And I thought about what that meant. And to anoint means to consecrate it. It means to set it apart as holy for the use of the Lord. Okay, and at first I thought that the Lord was only speaking about uh, our spiritual ears and eyes. But no, the Lord revealed to me that he is speaking about both. About our natural eyes and our natural ears and our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears. That the Lord wants us to set, to protect our eyes and our ears, what we hear and what we see. What goes into those because... Because when, when wickedness goes in, it will contaminate our heart. 
And the Lord wants us to consecrate, to make holy, to set our eyes, our natural, let's talk about our natural eyes first, our natural eyes and ears to hear what we need to hear, to hear the word of God, to hear things that builds our faith, that, to hear things that, and to see things that builds our faith and brings us closer to God and to keep things out of our eyes and ears that, that contaminates that uh, that takes us away from God. It takes us away from wisdom and knowledge and understanding, hearing the the and believing and coming into alignment with with um, a satanic agenda and coming into alignment just with the ways of the world that are that are in opposition to God. And I am talking about sinful things. That, you know, things that are opposed to God, to be careful what we see and what we hear and what we let into our, our, our eyes and our ear gate, into our, our being, into our heart, uh, to consecrate that unto the Lord. And also our, our spiritual, especially our spiritual ears, our, our supernatural hear, you know, our hearing, you know, when the enemy, he's always shooting, he's always shooting, um, uh, thoughts into our mind, uh, unholy things, and, uh, and and we have to be careful. We have to, you know, make sure that, that we reject anything that does not line up with the Word of God to consecrate our spiritual eyes and ears and to consecrate our natural eyes and ears to see, see and to hear so that we will be in alignment with God and so that we can understand, so that we will know who we are that we belong to God and that we are mighty, mighty warriors. The devil don't want you to know that. The enemy don't want us to know that, okay? And so the ways of God and the ways of his kingdom are so different from the ways of this world. So we have to have, we have to be kingdom minded and to receive that because God wants us to be his army. We are his army. <laughs> You know, sometimes we're a pitiful, sad little army. We don't, a lot of the church don't even know, and I'm going to be talking about this more in the teachings I'm about to do, but so much of the church don't even know who our enemy is. We, you know, rejects, you know, that even the enemy, Satan is real, that his kingdom is real, and that's exactly what the devil wants you to think. Um, but... The Lord wants us to see and to hear Him and to understand and to come in alignment with Him and to be kingdom-minded because, guys, we are His ambassadors as well. We, we speak for Him. And who's going to speak for God unless it's us? And who's going to represent God in the earth except us? Okay, it's us. Who's going to exercise God's authority in the earth unless it's God's children? But we have to be in alignment with Him. We have to anoint. We have to consecrate. We have to separate our, our eyes and our ears and our heart to Him for to, to know and to hear and to see Him. Because, you know, because He wants us to, to advance His kingdom and to bring positive change into the world. And who's going to do that? Only us. And we're only going to do it when we're able to see and to hear Him. And I believe that that's what he is, he is saying in this because he wants us to come take our position. He wants his church to rise up and to take our position to be and to do everything that he has called us to be and do. And we can only do that if we tune into him and we tune out the things of this world, the wickedness, and keep those things from our mind, from our heart. Well, that's all I have for right now. God bless you guys. I love you. Bye-bye.